Good evening and welcome to This Week in 60 Minutes. Um, I'm your host, Rui Baldwin. And I am your co-host, Juan Edgel Jr. On tonight's edition of This Week in 60 Minutes, we will be looking at spending priorities of the APNU AFC coalition government. Uh, but before we move into tonight's discussion, we want to take this opportunity to wish all Guyanese a happy 53rd independence. Uh, in reviewing some of what has been said about Guyana's independence and the struggles um, in our country, I came across an interesting piece uh, of writing from the late president and former co-founder of the PPP, Ms. Janet Jagan. She said, and I quote, Certainly, the seeds of seeking an end of colonialism must have been planted in the hard days of slavery and indentureship when life was unbelievably difficult and the reason for the crushing oppression and cruelty was easy to define. With these experiences and much more, the spirit of resistance against those who caused the sufferings was, it was inlaid and would later be expressed in a desire to be free of such exploitation and oppression. Guyana's history shows us that the very beginning of the recognition of the need to be independent of Britain began with the formation of the People's Progressive Party, and this was in 1950. Mm -hmm. The concept of a struggle to free British Guyana of colonialism probably had its origin in Chetty Jagan's studies. While a student in the USA of the writings of Nehru and Mahatma Gandhi, at that time, India was, was on course aimed at complete independence from British rule. The struggle inspired many in the British, the Dutch, and French, Belgium, and other, colo and other colonies, sorry, in other parts of the world to follow suit. As early as 1945, this is what Chadi Jagan had to say in an article he wrote. I quote, it therefore behooves the working class people to get control of government through their constitutional ballots in our forthcoming elections with a view towards complete independence, unquote. And after the PPP was founded and its first manifesto, the party had a message and they declared, the People's Progressive Party, recognizing that the final abolition of exploitation and oppression of economic crisis and unemployment and wars will only be achieved by the socialist reorganization of society, pledges itself to the task of winning a free and independent Ghana, a society in which security, plenty, peace, and freedom shall be the heritage of all. And thus began the struggle in the then British Guyana for independence. And we can all agree that the attainment of independence, it resulted from a very hard fought battle in this country. So as Guyanese, we have a duty now to protect our independence. We have a duty to build on our independence and to forge ahead. And I want to appeal to our Guyanese people not to become discouraged because we have a far way to go in this country. On part of the uh, current struggle one is yes. um, holding the coalition's feet to transparency and accountability. Um, <clears throat> one such latest fight of transparency and um, accountability yes. would be the involvement of Public Infrastructure Minister David Patterson and the transfer of U.S. $9,000 yes. to his personal bank account from a private Chinese yes. company. Um, Definitely what took place is a clear departure from the norms of transparency and accountability indeed, indeed. as well as good governance which you know yes. was much touted um, pre-2015 by the coalition yes. government. Um, since the information um, about the transfer of monies was released by the PPP, yes. Minister Patterson had threatened legal actions. That's it right. would seem that Minister Patterson is more concerned about yes. how the information um, reached the public domain rather than the fact that there was a breach and a financial transgression which yes. was committed. Um, and yes. rather than providing answers to those, he then threatens yes. legal actions. Yeah, it, it's, so. it's very clear that the minister needs to come clear on this issue, completely Definitely. clear on this issue, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of suspicion and a lot of evidence which would suggest otherwise in what he's made known. Mm -hmm. uh, one letter in this, in this week's newspaper said, and I quote, the use and abuse of public funds for personal aggrandizement is now becoming a norm. Mm -hmm. That's what the newspaper said. The very letter writer asks, and this is the question, how else can one interpret the general use of taxpayers' money to facilitate the travel of government ministers to attend the hearings of the CCJ? Right? It is totally unrelated to their portfolio mm -hmm. duties. How else can you justify such an action? Definitely. On that question, the Guyanese people have been asking. In fact, since they were first uh, photographed yes. there and published in the newspaper, yeah. there were letters published 
asking for the exact total of who is paying for these That's ministers right. to be there. It was subsequently revealed by no other than the Director General himself, yes. Mr. Harmon, yes, 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 that yes. the state paid for the expenses, but he has not come clean on how much was spent and for the Guyanese public to determine whether that money was spent yes. wisely and it was necessary. Now, moving on from that topic, yes. we would see that um, the coalition government's priorities are misplaced. Definitely, especially in the area of spending. Yes, indeed. They've been, um, they've been spending a lot of our money on trivial things, for example, the CCJ triple which you just mentioned, yes. and they have been focused on taxing the population yes. more and, and in I order think. to achieve um, yes. these, these monies to things. So we see that the coalition government, or rather the GRA, yes. has been advertising their regional tax campaign, which yes. they will be going into um, <clears throat> Region 9. Okay. And the Region notice 9. says that the GRA will be meeting with individual taxpayers and businesses in and around Anai, Letem, and St. Ignatius to discuss the legislative tax changes and administrative changes within GRE. These are happening on the 20th, 24th, and 22nd of May. Now, we know from past experience what this means. Yes. It's, it's just fancy Such an words. exercise. Yes. You know, and and mm -hmm. I should say that there's nothing wrong with the government uh, doing mm -hmm. these activities, but mm -hmm. in the case of this government, mm -hmm. what, what, is it, what, do you, what well, did that mean for us, really? We have all seen before that in Region 1, when yes. the government announced this lofty exercise that we're here to to um, uh, enlighten and educate the people and of and the taxes knowledge, and stuff. Yeah. What they did was that the old policy which the PPC administration has yeah. was that any goods coming into Guyana from Venezuela or surrounding yes. country, yeah. as long as it does not pass the Pomeroon River, yes. it's, it's not, that, it doesn't attract right. any that's taxes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now one can only reason, reasonably assume that they're about to do the same thing in Region 9, that is goods coming in from uh, Brazil into tax. Region 9 they will be taxing it. In fact, we know that the goods um, that, are the, that are coming in there currently, yeah. once they don't pass the Kurupakari River, yeah. it's supposed to be tax-free. That's right. No. But we see that this is <coughs> not the case uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in many cases. <coughs> so the uses of uh, taxpayers' monies has been in question, I would say, since this coalition would have taken office, mm -hmm. uh, since 2015. And we have to stress the point, or we cannot stress the point enough, mm -hmm. that a government has to spend money, but yes. its spending has to be towards prioritized areas. Definitely. And this is the issue that we have uh, with, mm -hmm. with this government. So we see, uh, we would have seen several uh, instances in Region 8, mm -hmm. the impacts of spending on our infrastructure. Uh, without ensuring the value for our money mm, in this country. Definitely. Um, speaking about that, we know that in budget 2019, 38.5 billion was budgeted for infrastructural work in Guyana. And as a result, um, <coughs> we have of that 2 billion for airstrips, um, 2 billion for hinterland and other, road, mm -hmm. other roads. Okay. Now, as you can see, the for, there have been many photographs on Facebook and in the media concerning yeah. the roads in the hinterland communities and yeah. Um, yeah. the airstrips in the hinterland community. Yeah. In fact, um, Itarin Bang, well, that air airstrip has now become unusable. Yes, as I, a saw, matter I of saw that. Um, the Linden Letten road um, to the Letem area is yeah. impassable. There have been many complaints from uh, those traversing the yeah. road on a daily basis. Uh, we have a video to show um, uh, of complaints from yeah, villagers from yeah, Region I think 8. our viewers would be able to benefit from that. Do we have yes. the clip? We can uh, yes. immediately, so let's listen. immediately roll it out if we have that clip. Fellas, we're going out with the TV in here this week. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of Okay, okay, so uh, we're, we're having Sorry some that. technical <laughs> difficulties in this country because this is our daily living and we have to go through in this stuff. It's very bad. They say you want thief. Because every day I try to get the bread on this road and it's very bad. The misconduct and the mismanagement of this government and this minister in this country is very poor. 
Isn't that so? APNU AFC promised more jobs and a good life. Instead, we lost 30,000 jobs. Taxes went up. People are less safe and cost of living skyrocketed. Now, after four years of neglect and corruption, the APNU AFC gang are coming with more empty promises. Only cause they need you now. We are smart. Fool me once, shame on you. This time, we will not be fooled by your sneaky fake news, APNU promises. We vote in PPPC to get Guyana working again. Yes, welcome back, viewers. Um, we do apologize for the technical difficulties yeah. we're experiencing yes. right now, but um, we will move on with the program as scheduled. Yes. So tonight with us in studio, we have with us a PPPC uh, member of parliament, Mr. Bishop Juan Egil, <laughs> as I should say. As we continue <laughs> to address tonight's topic, uh, spending priorities of the APNU <coughs> coalition government. Good evening, Bishop. Uh, good evening, Cromer Egil. It's <laughs> such a pleasure to have you here once again. Yes. No, a very good evening, gentlemen, and mm -hmm. I should say good evening to all your viewers. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to be able to share this program with you. Okay, thank you um, for coming back again. Now, yes, uh, getting right into it, um, Comrade Agil, uh, we have seen massive amount of monies being spent since the coalition government took office. Um, in fact, uh, for the past four years, they have spent one trillion um, dollars, one trillion and over dollars, one as point, a matter of fact. One point two trillion. Yes, I have the exactly is 1.2 trillion Ghana dollars as compared to the four years of the PPP in office where they would have spent for four years 782 billion. Now my question to you is, um, <clears throat> are we receiving value for these monies that are being spent? The, the, the simple, uh, I should say the short answer is no. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> I need to explain that it would appear that the philosophy of the AP and UAFC government is activity. Mm -hmm. We all know movement is not the equivalent to progress. You could be making movement, marking time, sweating, but not okay. making progress. And 1.2 trillion in expenditure, a lot of activity, you have to be able to look and see what has been achieved, what benefits were derived, how did this improve the welfare, how did this improve life and livelihood, and you, they're coming in short because most of this money has been spent on things that are not productive, they are, they are, it is spent on things that are, not, that are not essential, and it is spent on things that don't bring or accrue value to the people of Guyana. And, and, and you know, the examples are clear. The significant increase on local travel. Yeah. Um, the significant <coughs> increase in security. Mm -hmm. And I'm not <coughs> talking here about Ghana police force or the security services. We're talking here about guards. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it would appear that even the increase in terms of dietary, which has people have started to trivialize the amount of money that has been spent on the cheese straws and the mm -hmm. stuff <laughs> eggs and the, uh, mm -hmm. I have to add to that, the gray goose and the black <laughs> label. Um, <laughs> names that I am only hearing about, okay. but I have, no, I have no personal knowledge of okay. um, in, in this sector. Mm -hmm. But this government mm -hmm. is on an entity entertainment extravaganza they are living the good life now if you increase your stock of vehicles yeah. by a hundred percent it means that the operational cost to move a minister would have increased by a hundred percent because every minister now moves to the police escort they have their VIP vehicle and they have one or two other vehicles with staff in our days, when a minister went out, he didn't have a police escort. He wasn't hiding from the people. He went there to meet the people. You had probably one staff member to assist you with taking of your notes and your driver. 
these days they have to have two special assistants, a bodyguard, mm -hmm. uh, a public relations um, officer, and you have to have cheerleaders and <laughs> ringleaders and other um, touts, so to speak, to be able to bring the people to you because, you know, when ministers go these days, people are not coming to them. Mm -hmm. So they have to engage touts. They call them different names and they pay them fancy salaries. Mm -hmm. But these touts are acting to say, come and meet the minister, he can give you this, he can give you that. And the people I'm talking to tonight, they know exactly what I'm talking about because yeah. they're the ones who experience yeah. these things. So it's the wastage mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. takes place uh, <coughs> And, and now, when you go when when you go to certain functions, mm -hmm. the wanton wastage in terms of expenditure on food, the lavishness, even at the parliament, mm -hmm. sometimes you want to know what is really taking place because this culture of feed them and give them to drink to make them attend and participate has come back to Guyana again. So people are not willingly participating in these outreaches, willingly participating in these government activities. You go there because of the porks, the handout, the food, the chicken is good, the beer is plenty, and of course you have to get the DJ mm -hmm. and the cele celebrated artists to make sure you entertain the people well. Mm -hmm. But that don't bring development to the country. People want to hear that when they go to hospitals, they get medicines. We just had the other day, um, kidney transplant patients mm -hmm. complaining about the lack of the uh, anti-rejection, um, the, the drugs that yeah, you use. We spoke about that last week. We here spoke about well. that last yeah, week. We I'm like glad that you see. talk about. <clears throat> you have uh, diabetic patients who cannot get adequate supply of insulin or their mm -hmm. tablets. You have situations where People have to leave public institutions and go to private institutions to purchase medicines and, 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 and pharmaceuticals. Now, you're spending more money, mm -hmm. but people are not benefiting. So you have a situation where exercise books, mm -hmm. which supposed to have been done locally to benefit the children and the rest of it, more money has been spent, we're now discovering. It, it, it went to a company overseas, probably a job for the boys, a friends, a sweetheart deal, mm -hmm. no contractual advertising and procurement process, sole source, and you're spending more and you got less. Mm -hmm. So we can go through the activities and the behavior mm -hmm. Of the, this government, from the president <clears throat> to the most junior of junior ministers, all of them are living like lords yeah. in the country. They're not living as if they are there to serve the people. Mm -hmm. They are living as, as as if they are lords, emperors. And that uh, was quite interesting the other day when the CCJ matter, you know, confidence motion was being heard, mm -hmm. that one of the, the, the judges actually remarked that Guyana is not a monarchy. Mm -hmm. Guyana is a democracy. Definitely. And I think we need to remind this government mm -hmm. and all of their operatives, you are not kings and emperors here. You are servants of the people. Okay. When you offer yourself to public life and you, you, you become, you have access to the public purse, it's not what you could do for yourself to look good, but how you could use those resources to benefit people to ensure at the end of the day, they are satisfied. Yeah, so so, so my, my case is that they are spending more, but you're getting less. Excellent. So getting back to the issue of uh, priority spending, uh, before me, the, the figures here for, for 20, uh, 2010 to 2014, the last four years of the PPPC's uh, administration and 2015 to 2019, four years under the APNU AFC coalition government. Uh, what would you say about the deliverables of uh, this, this government so far? What have Guyanese benefited from, benefited from under this uh, coalition government over the past four years? Their stress level has gone up. Um, their understanding of the word incompetence has increased because every day they're understanding what incompetence in government is all about. So that's a word that is now household in every Guyanese mind. This government is incompetent. And they have watched and they have seen how people who came to them criticizing the PPPC as being corrupt, they have seen how all of those ordinary people who they shook hands with, who they campaigned with, 
how they have become lords. They have moved into mansions. Everybody has done over their homes. Some of them have gone to building now up to, up to their fourth home is being built and they have enriched themselves. So this money has not been passed on to the communities. This government has taken 700 plus million dollars out of the economy of Amerindian communities. Mm -hmm. You've taken out 700 million by, by firing 1,917 yeah. to community service officers. Mm -hmm. Taking 700 million dollars out of village economies, it means that those communities lost mm -hmm. access to about 700 million dollars in terms of what could have been spent, traded, turned over, and brought development yeah. to them. They have taken away the joy of entire regions of Guyana. Let's say, for example, that whole potential whale section. Yeah. People are there suffering because they have lost jobs. Region 6 is in, a, is in a state of depression. And, you know, I can't understand how people still make these arguments. When we built the Borbies Bridge, which was to bring relief to the suffering of people in terms of their transportation, transportation. time, and all the rest yeah. of it. You know what they said? We punished New Amsterdam. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> lost jobs because of the Borbis Bridge. Mm -hmm. Rather, people's lives were enhanced. People were able to have greater access. You didn't have to leave to go to the airport the day before your flight. You could have just left a couple of hours before. And, and you didn't have to go and spend money in a hotel to overnight and all the rest of it. Yeah. It became better for the people. And you could imagine, in Region 6, they have taken away thousands, seven, eight thousand persons in Region 6 lost their jobs. And that whole community is now in a, in a, in a state of depression. And you're spending more money. Yeah, but they would have said that um, every year we saw from since 2015, they, were, they kept on saying, you know, biggest budget ever. We were spending more money on That's the That's just a tagline, biggest, big, budget, biggest budget ever. Biggest budget ever. But they had uh, uh, enhanced or they had put in place budget cuts to the government that you would have... Um, you would have served on that's the, right and even though they, they cut uh, even though they cut our budgets we had a developmental agenda i can mm -hmm. tell you uh, as far as i am aware we had a vibrant public sector mm -hmm. investment program that was clearly defined where were we going we were building a tertiary level medical institution called the specialty hospital mm -hmm. at lillian dal mm -hmm. yeah. we were building uh, a state-of-the-art hydroelectricity uh, yes. scheme at uh, Amalia yeah. that would have brought in 165 megawatts of e electricity that would have cost the, the, the cost but would have brought down the cost of electricity, of electricity to about 10 US cents per kilowatt, kilowatt. hour. Yeah. We, we were advancing citizens security by implementing uh, in our city a smart city program which Minister Ramdutan keeps talking about every budget cycle, mm -hmm. but nothing is happening. I think they've not just lost the money with the IDB. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct, they've just lost the money. Very we famous. were incentivizing agriculture, bringing aid to farmers to move rice production into targets that you, 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 you didn't hear about. Rice was practically dead. We had gone up to 600,000 tons per um, annum. Mm -hmm. We were ensuring that there was a turnaround plan for sugar um, by, by putting subsidies into Gaisuku. They're not putting subsidies into Gaisuku anymore, and they still don't have nothing to show what they're doing with the money that should have gone into Gaisuku. Mm -hmm. They've taken a $30 billion bond, and still, that is still shrouded in secrecy. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the money is, who it's benefiting, and all the rest of it. So you hear these big sums, billions here and billions there. The fleet vehicles at the office of the president have increased significantly as a matter of fact the fleet of vehicles for used by government has gone up greatly and you, we must remember they had promised that government vehicles will not be abused because they'll be putting in a special number plate yeah, on them it's that. four it's years it's now CRG, and yeah. you, you still have no special yeah. number plate for government vehicles mm -hmm. you still have no special number so everything they have failed but in terms of fulfilling their promises, but what they're doing, spending more, mm -hmm. fancy rides, oh, and travel. That's it nice looks thing. like, let me tell you, when they change the policy 
of travel. <coughs> it was one way of siphoning off money and wasting money. When we travel, as ministers, you had to bring back receipts. Mm -hmm. yeah. The accountant general will give you what is called an advance. You went, you paid your hotel, you bring back your bills. You bought your food, you brought back your bills. Mm -hmm. You had a $25 US per day, what is called a per diem, that, you didn't, that was on receipt. You bought a bottle of water or your newspapers to read okay. overseas. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to bring receipts to that. You know what they have done with the policy? They have changed it. When the accountant general give you money to travel, it's not an advance, it's a final payment. So There's you no could just have a cabinet paper, mm -hmm. collect money to travel. You don't even have to prove that you left the country. Yeah. Once you collect the money, it's a final payment. And I, at the Auditor General, I'm sure is having the devil's job to track and check to ensure that all the money for overseas travel has been properly accounted for. Yeah. Because in order to fulfill that and bring closure, what, what you call settling your accounts, you have to either bring back your boarding pass or a copy of your passport page to show that you left, a copy of the page to show the destination that you arrived, all of that has been eliminated. So you could have a cabinet decision that says, you're going to Geneva to a conference, collect 13,000 US dollars, you go to New York, spend a couple of days and come back home. And you're $13,000 richer. So this <laughs> is the kind of wastage. And, and at the Public Accounts Committee where I currently sit, we, we, yeah. would, we would not be sitting there um, very long because th th this, 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 the spirit is coming to, to an end very, very, very fast. Okay. We intend to take back government and manage the resources <laughs> of the people of Guyana better. As you're speaking of the parliament, we see that tomorrow the um, National Assembly will be sitting where one of the first items on the agenda is the supplementary paper, the force of 2019, for a total sum of 7,962,000,000 what the government is sorting. Now, we know that the when you have... When one peruses the um, financial paper, you see things such as 300 million for ministerial outreaches. We know that the government had several ministerial outreaches, as they call it, bringing it cabinet to you. Um, no, no, no one is has been none the better. No one has found jobs, stuff like that. Um, the Ministry of the Presidency is asking for 4.3 million for a telephone system. Um, Minister Amna Ali is asking for 25 million for unsuspected situations. No, what you should say, the general secretary of the PNC, mm -hmm. it, because mm -hmm. this money mm -hmm. is not about government work. Mm -hmm. This financial mm -hmm. paper that they're going to parliament with tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, I can say it here, mm -hmm. and I would have said it in the parliament. I wrote a letter not so long ago to the media saying, mm -hmm. the parliament should not be used as a place mm -hmm. of campaign, raising money for campaigns. Mm -hmm. This finance financial paper that is going tomorrow mm -hmm. is money for electioneering mm -hmm. and campaigning. This is what it is all about. Now, if you look at the financial paper closely, and I have walked with a, with, <coughs> with, with, with a copy here. Mm -hmm. So on the urban roads, mm -hmm. the, the voted provision mm -hmm. for the entire year, which was planned and budgeted coming from programs in the Ministry of Public Infrastructure mm -hmm. was 900 million. Mm -hmm. They're asking for an additional 500 million. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like the minister, Minister Patterson, mm -hmm. who seems to like to talk, and I like when he talks because the more he talks, the more he puts himself in trouble, mm -hmm. to come and tell us mm -hmm. that they have completed $900 million worth of work that they require an additional 500 million. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what this 500 million is going to do. It is, it is for the urban centers. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you look at local government elections, the PPPC won significantly in the NDCs, and we, we won a number of towns. Yes, mm -hmm. they did. What they're hoping to do for the national elections is to put a, a money splurge into certain towns to be able to see if they could buy votes. Mm -hmm. Do things, big, you know, get things, get people busy. Maybe give out some contracts here, some contracts there, and of course, you know, these days you don't tender anymore. This is five hundred million dollars of campaign money that that they're asking for. Your whole year program mm -hmm. is nine hundred million, and this is only May, the fifth month of the year. Mm -hmm. They have not yet expended this nine hundred million, but this five hundred million is campaigning money. Mm -hmm. This is early. We're not even yet 
half year. The minister hasn't produced his half year report. We don't know that the economy has performed so well that you could afford to do yeah. $500 million yeah. more of work yeah. as against what was budgeted. We don't know the performance. In fact, we learned that um, the, while they were doing their preparations for the half year report and finding out from the agencies as to budget implementations, the budget of 307 300 billion, 700 million plus million, um, is only at a 17% implementation rate across all um, agencies. And yet we are coming after four and a half months now and asking for another almost eight billion Ghana dollars, which would then take the budget to 308 billion. Well, let me just six. let me just show you what is worse. On the 6294, which is um, others, Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. They had budgeted, this is where you pay expenditure like settling court cases mm -hmm. and, and all the rest of it. Ten million nine hundred and forty thousand was the budget. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow the Minister of Finance is going to the Parliament for eight hundred million. Mm -hmm. Now listen. That is where um, they hit the ministerial outreach. This is what they're doing. Headline. So <clears throat> he was taken to court by Dipcon. Mm -hmm for a 2.2 million US dollar outstanding debt that he did not honor. So they used that as a way of coming into, into the treasury, but rather than dipping out only to pay Dipcon so that he don't go to jail for contempt of court, you, you tag on there, and that's how you do campaign financing. You tag on and you say for ministerial outreaches. Well, what government would have planned a year and not catered for ministerial outreach. Mm -hmm. In every ministry, there is money for ministerial travel, for the minister yes, to travel. There is travel and subsistence. Mm -hmm. in, local in, and overseas. Oh, local and overseas. In mm -hmm. every ministry. Mm -hmm. But this here is what you call now the campaign money. This is $300 million more mm -hmm. for campaigning. Mm -hmm. So you could get out on another splurge. The ministers mm -hmm. are around the place. You can buy and don't collect the change. You can give the boys a top up. You, you, you can nice people up because mm -hmm. what has happened is that they had a budget, but they did not, they did not anticipate a no confidence vote mm -hmm. coming that would have been successfully passed, mm -hmm. that would have created an environment for an election in 2019. So this finance, financial paper is to remedy their, 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 their short-sightedness and to be able to generate money to start doing things, fixing things here, get busy everywhere. So when you go to see the Minister of, of Public Infrastructure is asking money for, to do bridges, mm -hmm. you have a maintenance program. Yes. This is not a bridge that has been collapsed or is about to collapse, but this is about going in the community mm -hmm. and be seen to do something. It's yeah. electioneering, mm -hmm. it is campaigning, campaign financing. And of course, you know, the Minister is now able to give out contracts up to $20 million yes. um, Without we even tendering, policy. we saw the policy change. <clears throat> Without even tendering, so he could give out a road here, a dam there, fixing a strip there, mm -hmm. for twenty million. But the real cost of the road is six and seven million. Mm -hmm. But the contractor got twenty million, and there is no competitive uh, bidding because you're not advertising. So when the people of Ghana understand how deceitful, how treacherous this document that has been laid in the parliament that will be passed tomorrow, mm -hmm. because they will go, there will be no opposition there to ask them questions because we've already dealt with the fact that we're not going back to parliament until the ruling of the CCJ. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why they hurriedly tried to put this through so that they'd be able to get access to dip into the kitty and to be able to accelerate uh, wastage and spending only for the purpose of buying favor is what you call curry favoring the people. Mm -hmm. The people lost confidence in them, so now there's a big money splurge. Money, 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 money everywhere. But they will be held accountable. And the people of Ghana are not fools. They know that this government is long <coughs> on talk and very short on implementation <coughs> and action. Yeah, definitely. Um, as we continue to look at the financial paper that will be laid, um, <coughs> it is already laid. It's, it's going to be yeah, considered there, tomorrow. That will be considered tomorrow. Sorry, um, we see that several of these ministries are asking for increase in security. Now, I know over the years, from since 2015 to current, there have been these monumental increases in security services for these ministries. Yet, 
if one was to go to a ministry, there's no change in the guard or the old there's, hiring there, practice. There is no like change <coughs> in the number of locations. Mm -hmm. There's <coughs> no change in the number of guards that are required. Mm -hmm. But what they would have done mm -hmm. is that they would have changed the services because a lot of these security services are now special groups that have been put together, some of them ex-military officers, ex-police officers, who are aligned mm -hmm. to the PNC and the government, who form companies, and they have now caused the rates to go up in significant ways. Mm -hmm. First, when they came to Parliament, they said it's because of the minimum wage increase. Yeah. Yes, we recall that. And we uh, supported that. Mm -hmm. If you got yes, guards must be able to get paid. But now, mm -hmm. when you check the rates mm -hmm. that are being paid to these contractors mm -hmm. as compared to the rates that the guards are actually receiving, yeah. is that you see there's a big fluff and a creaming off of resources to get money in the hands of political operatives for campaign purposes. Oh. And that's what's taking place. We can easily point to one. Um, the voted provision for the Ministry of Social Protection and Social Services was 92 million. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming four and a half months after and asking for an additional 9.3 million mm -hmm. for just security services. Perfect. The same thing obtains with the, um, the child care and protection. They budgeted 46 million. Which is also under social protection. Uh, yeah, also under, under social the protection. general secretary of the PNC. Let's yeah. Let's put it the way it needs to be put, yes. under the General <laughs> Secretary of the PNC. Mm -hmm. Good. So she's also asking for another 8 and another 6.5 million. Yes. Which would give you uh, a rough total of about $25 million more mm -hmm. in security um, services. And then, now, then, then just walk around mm -hmm. and see what is the security service. Mm -hmm. That's providing, and just check to see the nexus between that, the, the principles of that service and the PNC, mm -hmm. and you could understand why this financial paper is before us in the parliament. Now, if I can draw your attention quickly to um, a statement by um, the Minister of Finance, who was quoted in the press um, very lawfully saying that we must borrow, but we must do so judiciously. Um, he said, and I quote directly from the article here, in short term, loans must be taken for these purposes, but have to be managed, targeted, and based on real needs. Now, the, the, the purposes that he was talking about is for all, whether road, bridges, boats, healthcare facilities, and so much, and so on and so forth. So what we have here is that the minister is encouraging borrowing, carrying up the debt, but we're not getting any this is goods just, delivered. This is just <clears throat> an excuse mm -hmm. for this paper. Mm -hmm. The minister of finance, knows mm -hmm. that in the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. they are what are called planners. Mm -hmm. Planners that are associated with every ministry and agency. In the preparation of the annual budget, these planners sit with the various ministries and the agencies. They examine how many roads to be done, yeah. what is the cost per mile per road. They examine how many health centers to be refurbished. Uh, we're talking here about maintainers as well as capital. Mm -hmm. We're talking here about water treatment, how many families to benefit from water, how many miles of pipe you need, and these things are costed. How, how many ambulances are to be bought? Now, the only, when you're finished with your budget, mm -hmm. the only thing that should really be coming, because you're doing proper budgeting, is emergencies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking here about emergencies. We're talking here about a splurge. That's what we're talking about here. So they are making the, the minister, by his <coughs> statement that is giving cover, is making his own staff in the Ministry of Finance look as if they're unprofessional, incompetent, okay. and incapable <coughs> of doing proper planning <coughs> and forecasting mm -hmm. for agencies and sectors. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would just like to get your perspective. Uh, we, you've, you've said a lot about the spending priorities of this government. But what can you say about the PPPC and, and their uh, vision to, uh, on spending or what do they plan on doing in spending into the future? What can you say about that? On what are our priorities? Yeah, priorities? Health, yeah. education, water, citizen security, yeah. and a substantial part of our capital budget 
infrastructural development that leads to production. You're not just going to build a boardwalk, which you should build, but we build farm to market access roads so people could be able to get employment, their goods could be able to get out, they could be able to get sold. So when we think about the prior, and, and of course we have to think about the welfare of, of the vulnerable groups in our, yeah. in our country, um, the disabled, uh, the, 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 the senior citizens, um, child um, care, and others that need, single mothers that need specialized um, care mm -hmm. and, 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 and support. So when we look at our priorities, social services, infrastructure, development, giving support to the private sector, farmers, yeah. and others to be able to do things to create jobs, to catapult us into the next level of development, to open up new sectors. Housing was a major, because people got to be comfortable. Yeah. People have to, you know, there was a time in Guyana, probably you guys are too young to know, where three families would be living in the same house. The son will get married, he has to bring in his wife. The daughter will get married, have to bring in the husband. Then if they'll do a little attachment, they all share the same kitchen. Then you have the yard brawls, the yeah. mother law daughter law fights. But this government People will be able to get their dignity by getting out there and every family having their own Indeed. housing unit. Just the other day we saw one fourth of the capacity of the previous government is being delivered. Yeah. And, and, they're build, and they're building a number of duplexes. And, and I've, I've spoken with several people about these duplexes, and they're completely, uh, they're completely against having a duplex. <laughs> as people want to own their own house with land. I want to plant my kitchen garden. Right. I want my dog to run around That's the yard. Right. I want my car to park in the porch. I want to be able to sit and keep barbecue with my friends without having my neighbors involved. That's right. So that's, that's what right. people want. Now, uh, just taking you back um, in terms of the spending, we have spoken continuously here on the program about crime, and you just mentioned that um, you know there was a smart plan for the city and in terms of cit citizen security and all of that. Now, we know that the Ministry of Public Security would have received a hefty sum, billions of dollars, where to fight crime. However, the country is going down a path currently where there's every morning you wake up three, four persons murdered, someone shot and killed, someone home broken into, and stuff like this. Um, so, and the financial paper has nothing in terms of money for any. No, this is an immediate situation which would require money. If is it, so good point, good point. what I'm trying to get at is, do you think that? they should have been looking at this and th that they is should have. everything. But, but if you don't have a policy direction, how are you going to cost it? Sure. If, the, the, in our country today, there's a great vacuum as it relates to policy direction, mm -hmm. how to deal with citizens' security. Mm -hmm. President Granger promised that he had all the security experts <coughs> available to him. He himself being a security expert mm -hmm. and all the X this and X that. But they lack a policy direction mm -hmm. to deal with crime and citizen security. So how, they can't even come to us to say for money because you would have to explain what is the policy direction? Mm -hmm. What is the policy direction? You see, when we were there, we had a particular policy, policy direction. Mm -hmm. and that's why we were able to implement uh, programs in 10 communities where you, you, you had um, young people who were being involved in crime. We went in there, we put money, we train them in skills, we give them tools to be able to get back to work. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we improve the opportunity for them to be able to recreate, use their energies in a constructive way. So the girl didn't have to just sell marijuana and get and go to jail. She was able to learn to do nails and hairdressing. She got some money and she was able to start her own business, leather craft, carpentry, masonry, and, and we were able to develop that. We were able to bring community leaders together to do mentoring in those communities. Mm -hmm. And we incentivize their participation by doing things within the community. There was a clear policy. When crime became a, a major issue with the kind of uh, guns and techniques that were being used, we formed a SWAT unit for the first time in, the, in, in, in this country. In fact, it was the SWAT unit that did... Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm hearing now they're saying it's not the SWAT unit. No. So they, it seems that the glory has to be shared between some groups that they don't particularly want to just say they get a police force. So 
the policy direction was clear. Mm -hmm. We established what was called the neighborhood community policing. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about community policing groups. Mm -hmm. That was something that we supported. But the neighborhood community policing brought police closer to the people. It was one way of gathering intelligence, having people, eyes, ears, and boots on the ground in every nook and cranny. When Minister Ramchitan came into office as Vice President of Public Security, he took away the vehicles that should have gone to community policing groups. And so I said they, 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 they weren't needed. Mm -hmm. And now he's in shambles to get those same communities. Because remember, if if all of us live in a community and we're watching out for our community and, and the government is giving you the resources to help you to protect your community. Your community is safer. Yes. So we were talking here about safer communities, a policy direction that drove us to safer communities. But you know, what's the policy direction that we got from this government? You go to jail and you release criminals mm -hmm. because the lawyers who represented them that lost the cases are now in government. Mm -hmm. And you had collected huge sums of money from these families. So one way of compensating those families is that you use your administrative authority and discretionary powers and you freed criminals back into society, even though you told us that if it, if these persons who can get amnesty and pardons are nonviolent um, criminals. Mm -hmm. So we were in a quagmire where the wrong signal was sent even to law enforcement and the judicial branch, because if law enforcement is arresting people, mm -hmm. the judiciary is giving them fair trials and putting them where they belong, out of trouble. And you have an administration, because you have a close nexus between the communities where they come from, or you are the lawyers that represented them, free you from jail, put you back in the streets, but the policemen are, are, are left to think, boy, if you touch these guys, these guys got God, godfathers in government, mm -hmm. we might very well lose our jobs. And there was a slackening up. And we all remember the infamous statement from no other than the president himself is to not shoot and kill right. the, um, the bandits and everything. So um, as it relates to the financial paper, before I allow you to make your closing remarks, I'd just like to say that in specific where it concerns the general secretary of the PNC, as you keep referring to Minister Amna Ali, um, the citizens of Guyana are definitely calling for a publication to be made of who receives these 25 million um, US that she's asking for in expected situations as it relates to um, persons. It's a slush fund. Uh, it is a political slush fund. Definitely. Yeah. That's why we're asking for, it, for the names of the person and the amounts to be published and made public for public scrutiny. And um, thing. No. If you have anything in closing, so well, well I have one other oh, question, sorry. Bishop. <laughs> before before he goes, I know that our viewers are they're tuned in tonight and they're they've heard all about what this government is doing. But what does the PPP have in place to ensure that spending into the future is, is they're held accountable with regards to their spending? Uh, you know, we have prospects for oil and oil revenue that will be coming in. What can Guyanese expect from a PPP government to ensure that the, the, the spending is in place towards the right direction? Is the Integrity Commission going to function? That, 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 that's, that's the aspect we, we, that we want we to We have about. called for the functioning of the Integrity Commission. We have called for public declarations. Um, when you declare, public officials must dec make public their declarations. Because the issue here is accountability. Accountability. With, with, with but we have also promised the people of Guyana that stronger penalties, including jail terms for non-disclosure of, uh, as it relates to money coming in from through the oil sector. Uh, it's going to be a whole regime of enforcement. We want to see an, a, 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 a well-staffed audit office. We want to be able to see an audit office that has a special um, department to deal with oil and um, gas because that is not going to just be routine auditing. Yeah. That has to be specialized yeah. um, auditing. And more so, the whole thing about disclosure. And this is where you can stop the PPPC from. We let the public know what's happening. We never hid an 18 million US signing oh, bonus and denied its existence. We never collected money and denied it existence. Even when we had extra budgetary agencies having accounts separate from the consolidated fund, those reports were tabled in the National Assembly. Everybody knew how much money was in NISIL. Everybody knew how much money was in the Forestry Commission, Central Housing and Planning Authority, because we were up to date with our audited reports that were going. So disclosure, when people know what you have and know what you're doing, 
with it, you are accounting to them and they could ask the questions. And we promise to continue and improve on our level of accountability. Now, as it relates to the financial paper, and I think we're out of time. Yeah, they, are they sought to bait the PPPC with this financial paper. Mm -hmm. We have made the case that GCOM has all the money that is needed to conduct elections. Yes, so the first thing they did on the financial paper was to put money for GCOM. Mm -hmm. Because they figure if we go, if, if, if they put money for GCOM, it will kind of bait us into going to the parliament for a debate. But let me just say, the Minister of Finance have also let the cat out the bag. Here he says, it's not a GCOM getting this money, it's just in case. Definitely. Because they already have $5.3 billion, enough to conduct elections. But when pressed by members of the media, he let the cat out of the bag because he wants to play a smart aleck. He said, this money that they're asking for for GCOM is a just-in-case money. Well, I think he needs a just-in-case licking. <laughs> Some of us who are old enough know our grandmother's beat is just-in-case. <laughs> Okay, so we want to, uh, to thank you, uh, Bishop Edger, for being on the program this evening. I know that our viewers are always benefiting from your insights and your uh, views on, on issues on politics in Guyana. Uh, I also want to, to, I don't know if I'll get an opportunity to speak, but I also <laughs> want just to take this final opportunity to wish all our viewers a happy independence. Thank you very yes, much. <laughs> okay, so you definitely have another opportunity. Um, uh, we just um, had Bishop, and I, I must say thank you for coming on and explaining um, these, uh, the financial paper and all the spending and the priorities of the government. So basically what we've been talking about tonight is the spending priorities of the APN UFC government. And you heard from no other the man in charge of the, well, not in charge, he's a member of the Public Accounts Committee in the Parliament for the PPP and he would have just explained to you how the, um, what the financial paper is really aimed at and is just a trickery from the AP and UFC to garner money for their elections campaign. Yes. So I just want to appeal to uh, specifically our young people out there. We would always encourage them to pay attention to the news, to read about what's going on, to ensure that you analyze the financial papers, to see exactly what our monies are going towards. Yeah, what are exactly. we paying taxes for? What mm -hmm. are we paying VAT for? Because you can't just be paying taxes, but you have to know what you're getting in return for the monies that you're expending. Mm -hmm. So I want us to encourage, especially with young people, to pick up the newspaper, ensure you look at TV programs like this, and ensure that you're informed about what's happening in Guyana. Thank you. All right, thank you for being with us for the last half an hour. We must apologize once more for the technical difficulties that we have had. Um, continue to read the mirror if you want information on these and more other issues. You can find tons of information there at the mirror. Uh, thank you and good evening. <coughs>
Ghana eagerly awaits CCG ruling on December 21 no confidence motion. President admits he still to declare his assets to the Integrity Commission. Second suspect held for murder of businessman's son. And in sport, Ghana Amazon Warriors pick Pakistan's Shadab Khan, Hethi Maya, Rutherford and Paul retained. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optic, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Pretus Fashions. For all of your exclusive Indian wear, check us out at Pretus Fashions at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. We have a wide variety of shalwars, gararas, saris, three-piece quarter suits, bridal wear, children outfits, and accessories for all occasions. Pretus Fashions, located at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. Contact us on telephone number 227-86 four four that's pretis fashions it happens your septic tank is full all the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Every day is a new beginning. It's another chance to start over. Another chance to do the right thing. Make the right decisions. Every day you deserve the best. Make the right choice. Every day. Every day range of products. Affordable and high quality. Every day. Distributed by Guy Bisco. 35 and 38 Industrial Estate. Eccles. East Bank Demerara. Telephone. 233-3255. Keeping with our reputation for providing quality products, services, and solutions, we're pleased to introduce to you our newest line of solar energy products by Victron Energy, provided by Farfan and Mendez Limited. Presents the Independence Washed Out Beach Party on Monday, May 27th at the Bushy Park Beach Resort. Enjoy a well stocked bar plus live performances from Stephen Ramford. Bring out everybody, bring out your family, we're gonna have a good time. The blazing hot soccer artist, Lil Cowin. Lil Cowin live, Independence Washed Out Bushy Park. You don't know. Bound to sing. Monday, May 27th, I'm coming to Bushy Park. And the juggling vibes of Notorious Sound with DJ Dangles passing through at the Bushy Park Beach Burica. Compliments of Stack a man's beer. Good evening and welcome to this, our Wednesday, May 22, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Our top story this evening. As the nation awaits the ruling by the Caribbean Court of Justice, the appellants are eager to have their consequential orders heard given the court rule in its favor. 
Former Attorney General Anil Nandlal has called out the Ghana Elections Commission for disregarding the looming judgment from the Caribbean Court of Justice as it proceeds with house to house registration. GCOM is a party to two cases before the CCJ, the Consolidated Appeals to the December 21 No Confidence Motion, and the President's unilateral appointment of retired Justice James Patterson as Chairman of the Commission. The electoral body has also been faced with a lawsuit from the People's Progressive Party to refrain from the conduct of House to House registration. Nandlal contended that the electoral body is employing delay tactics and colluding with the People's National Congress to suspend the elections. Posture of GCOM. The position of GCOM, the fact that they are proceeding with that degree of rapidity is the demonstration to all of us that to hell with you, to hell with the court, to hell with the judges, to hell with the constitution, we are going to do what we want to do. But a country will break up when those things happen. He lambasted the electoral body for ignoring the legal opinion given by its legal officer, Excellence Dazzle, that there was no need to refresh the voters' list. This advice is counter to the government-nominated commissioners who are bent on the need for house-to-house -house registration. The opinion did not coincide with the political direction that they receive, because the political direction is wrong, it's unlawful, it's contrary to the law. And because the young lady gave them an opinion based upon the law to say, look, one, house to house registration is unnecessary because you have a list that you can use. And secondly, house to house registration